Hello everyone, Ethan Ader here with Horizon Hobby and welcome to the fifth video of the Blade Fusion 700 build series. In this video we are going to be installing all of the electronics, so we have the speed controller, the flybarless system, and also the cyclic servos, and lastly the tail servo. We are going to get all of these electronics mounted up to the helicopter and essentially get it ready to set up and ultimately fly. Let's go ahead and get started. The first electronic that we can mount onto the Blade Fusion 700 can be the ESC. Now there's a couple ways you can do it you can either zip tie it to the ESC tray but what I like to do is use screws in order to mount the ESC because what's nice about the ESC tray is that as you see here there are different mounting holes in order for screws to go in to mount various size ESC's now with that being said the 200 amp ESC has three holes where you can put screws in and what I like to do is go to parts bag A3 and in here you will see some M3 by 8 screws and you can just take three of those and use those in order to mount the 200 amp ESC onto the ESC tray. With the ESC mounted up to the tray, you can now plug in the motor wires into the ESC wires. Do not secure these wires until you have successfully ran up the motor and have ensured that the motor spins the correct way. If it does not spin the correct way, you can swap any two motor wires and it will reverse the motor direction. Once you have confirmed that the motor spins the correct way, you can secure the motor wires to the ESC tray using a zip tie as you see here. You can now route the ESC signal and BEC wires through the frame like you see in the video. It is important that at this time you do not yet zip tie any of the wires to the airframe. This is because we want to make sure all of the electronics can mount freely up to the airframe before zip tying anything down. Up next we can install the cyclic servos. So I'm going to be showing you the process on installing the servo arm onto the cyclic servo and basically getting it ready to mount up to the Fusion 700. Locate parts bag A2 where you will find the servo arms, the ball links, and the hardware used to install the ball links onto the servo arms. You will also see these optional servo brackets. You can use those, but if you decide not to, that's totally fine. I am going to opt to not use them, and keep in mind, whenever you are installing the servo arm onto the servo, it's a good idea to plug up the servo to a servo tester and make sure that the servo is centered. Repeating that process for the other two cyclic servos, you can see that we have all three cyclic servos ready to mount. Keep in mind that for one of the cyclic servos, the servo arm is going to be going the other direction. And one thing to note too, if you are using the Spectrum H6350 servos that come in the super combos, you can use the shorter servo leads as you see here. Now that the servos are installed, we can go ahead and locate parts bag A1 where we will find three control linkages that are 67 millimeters. These are the ones that we are going to use to connect the servos to the swash plate. One thing that you want to make sure when installing these control linkages is that the little blade logo on each ball linkage is facing on the outside.
Now that the control linkages for the servos are attached to the swash plate and also the servo arms, we can now install the 60 millimeter control linkages. These are the flybarless control linkages and they are also going to be located in parts bag A1. Let's go ahead and install these linkages. Now that we have all the control linkages on the Blade Fusion 700, we can go ahead and install the tail servo. As you can see here, you can use the same method for installing the servo arms to the tail servo as you did the cyclic servo. And as you see here, one thing to note is that the linkage ball goes one hole in instead of the cyclic servos where the ball is on the outermost hole. This is going to be on the second outermost hole. Again, all of this hardware can be found in parts bag A2, and you also want to locate the tail servo mounts that are found in parts bag M9. Let's go ahead and install the tail servo. Next, locate parts bag B1 where you will find the tail control rod guide and go ahead and locate the tail control rod. Once again, when snapping on the ball linkages on the tail control rod, make sure that the blade logo is facing outwards. If you would like to add an additional tail control rod guide, you can easily do so. In parts bag A3, you will find a second tail control rod guide and sleeve. Personally, I have not had any issues using one. However, if you would like to add a second one, you can easily do so. We can now mount the flybarless system to the Blade Fusion 700. Since I am using the Super Combo, I am going to be installing the Spectrum FC6350HX. It's a good idea to plug in all of your electronics into their respective ports on the flybarless system before mounting the flybarless system to the airframe. If you are unsure which port on the flybarless system is correct for each plug, you can refer to the flybarless system's manual. With all the electronics plugged into the flybarless system, we can now mount the flybarless system to the Blade Fusion 700 using some flybarless mounting tape. You can also mount your receiver to the Blade Fusion 700. If you are using the Super Combo, you can mount the SRXL2 receiver right here. On the other side of the lower main frame, you can mount the DSMX remote receiver right here. At this point, we can now secure all of the loose wires to the airframe using zip ties. As you can see here, there is no possible way for wires to interfere with any moving parts on the Blade Fusion 700. The last thing to do is configure the battery tray to mount up the batteries onto the tray and we can attach that entire assembly onto the helicopter. So go ahead and locate the Velcro straps that you see here. Also there is some sticky Velcro that you can use to mount onto the tray and then you want to locate the battery tray itself. Notice that I stuck the Velcro on the side that does not have this plastic piece facing up. Using all four battery straps, you can secure the batteries to the tray.
The battery tray can now be mounted to the Blade Fusion 700 by pulling up on this battery latch, sliding the tray into the appropriate slots on the inside of the airframe, pushing the tray all the way in and releasing the latch. As you can see, the battery tray is now locked into place. If you need to take it out, you can pull up on the latch again and just pull the battery tray out. Congratulations everyone, you have completed the build on the Blade Fusion 700. As you can see, the Blade Fusion 700 goes together very quick and very easy for both experienced pilots and pilots who have never built a 700 size kit before. If you are running the Spectrum Super Combo on the Blade Fusion 700, you can also see how easy the electronics mount up to the helicopter and how easy the wires can be routed through the airframe. We hope you all enjoy the build of the Blade Fusion 700 just as much as you enjoy it in the air. Thank you all so much for watching and happy flying.